NVIDIA is about to spend $20 billion in a competitor. Does this mean that NVIDIA is scared of this competitor or is there more to the story? Let's take a closer look in today's episode. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video and check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. All right, so first, I just want to say Merry Christmas to all those that celebrate. If not, happy holidays. Hope everybody had a great time um, with the family. It is December 26. I am sorry for the past few days. I probably haven't done a video. I've just been relaxing, enjoying the time with everybody. But back to the grind. We have so much more to cover. And obviously, we're going to look at my favorite company here, NVIDIA. So today, the market likes what they heard. Uh, right now, the stock is over $190. If you guys have been following this channel, you guys know that I've been talking about how NVIDIA seems to be at a very exciting uh, valuation right now, especially after this recent AI fears. We've also talked about a lot of other AI companies, but NVIDIA continues to be my biggest position by far. Now, the biggest thing happening right now is there are reports that NVIDIA is to buy an AI chip startup Grok for $20 billion. Now, the reports and everything, the news keep changing over time. It's not, and, and we actually have a, a, an announcement here from, from uh, Grok, the company which we're going to see. And for those that are not familiar, Grok is a AI chip maker. They make an ASIC chip that is really good at inferencing smaller context very quickly. Uh, and I, I believe that's the key here. Uh, so Grok and NVIDIA enter a non-exclusive inference technology licensing agreement to accelerate AI inference at global scale. Um, and what's going to happen as part of this agreement, Jonathan Ross, Grok's founder, Sunny Madra, Grok's president, and other members of the Grok team will join NVIDIA to help advance and scale the license technology. So many people are calling it an act we hire, right? It's, it's a, it's, well, it's not a true acquisition. You're bringing that key talent over to NVIDIA. And obviously, I mean, we all know it. One of the main reasons for this not to be a direct acquisition is because NVIDIA being the biggest company right now, any form of acquisition would kind of fight as a monopoly, as some form of bad for the market. It would open up a lot of antitrust in various regions, right? We have Parts in China that would say, look, this isn't what we're going to do just because of the tensions happening all over the world. So depending on who would have to agree, there's a lot of issues globally. And then obviously with the AI market being so big and video being such a big player, it makes the most sense not to make a direct acquisition, but to go through more what this called this act we hire. Now, the agreement reflects a share of focus on expanding access to high performance low cost inference. And that's what Grok has always been. It's been this LPUs, which is what they make, which is great at inference pretty quickly at very cheap rates. Now there are some there are some limitations to this. And obviously, right, because everybody could say, Jose, if this is such a great chip, why hasn't him really taken off? And the reason is it's very limited to certain aspects and certain markets. And then you have to build an overall infrastructure just based on this chip. And this is why I think NVIDIA has actually made this acqui higher. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. First, I just want to see what the overall street was kind of discussing. Um, we have this post here that we can see some firms, uh, Cantor, we have Bank of America, we have uh, Bard, all either increase the price target or maintain their price target due to the strength that they see uh, this strategic deal with Grok. Uh, so many are saying NVIDIA Grok deal in line with AI inference push, uh, says Bard price target at 275. And you're going to see a lot of other people believe that this is a great deal. I personally believe it is a great deal. I agree with them there that it is expensive, right? Some people expensive, but strategic. I do believe it's expensive, but I think it's strategic. Now, first, where would NVIDIA, in theory, get this money? First, it, it, with thanks to this amazing, amazing run in the AI market, total cash and cash equivalent is sitting at $60 billion right now. This is massive. So in theory, there's no need for debt or anything from this. They have spent plenty of cash to allow this to happen. Now, if you want great charts like this, make sure to check out fiscal.ai slash Jose to get 15% off. I use this platform on a daily basis. If you are a long-term investor, I truly, truly recommend it. 
Now, just another quick chart here, the free cash flow. This company is printing cash, right? $77 billion in the 2012 months. That's after pay paying a crazy, crazy tax deal. And I believe we're going to continue to see this improve and improve and improve within the next few quarters, within the next two, four to six quarters, I would say, we're going to get closer to $100 billion, 2012 months of free cash flow, which is wild. It is extremely, extremely wild. Now, there are already some information going on. Uh, so WCCF Tech posted the following from an internal mail from NVIDIA CEO, Jesse Wong. We plan to integrate Grok's low latency processor into the NVIDIA AI factory architecture, extending the platform to serve an even broader range of AI inference and real-time workloads. While we are adding talented employees to our rank and licensing Grok's IP, we are not acquiring Grok as a company. Now, a lot of things there, right? But it's overall more an integration to extend into an overall market. And this is something that Jensen has always done, right? And NVIDIA has actually done really well. Well, they build building blocks, right? They, they build bricks and through these bricks, they make this amazing, amazing health in house in the AI market. And I think this is exactly that, right? I don't think Grok as an individual is a competitor to NVIDIA. I don't think NVIDIA is seeing this as I need to eat up this competition. The chip is good, but it's not something that you're seeing hyperscalers built up to massive, massive levels. And that shows right off the bat that it's not competitive. What I think NVIDIA has is NVIDIA has created this amazing AI infrastructure, this amazing thinking machine. And that thinking machine, if you add these chips, becomes even better and better and better and better. So individually, Grok is okay. I mean, it's pretty great for, for kind of those um, quick, efficient, inference of very low, small context where you need kind of real-time solutions, but that's about it. But when you put it into an NVIDIA ecosystem and into the NVIDIA AI center, data center that they built, it becomes an amazing, amazing asset. And there's so many things about that, right? I mean, you can think about food, right? If you eat a certain ingredient by itself, it's okay. But if you mix it with the right ingredients and with other ingredients, that final product becomes so much more, it becomes a hundred thousand times better when it's integrated within the right products. Hopefully that makes sense. And that's exactly what this is, right? Individually, Grok isn't that big of a thing, in my opinion. Part of the ecosystem, it becomes a true breadwinner. And this is actually, it, when I saw this, it reminded me of NVIDIA's recent announcement. So NVIDIA recently announced the Rubin CPX. And one thing that NVIDIA is really, really trying to do is kind of add more chips within its system, where it has the Rubin, which is its GPU, it has the Vera, which is CPU. And there are certain workloads that you could say, look, I don't need my expensive GPU doing this. I need maybe something else to do this. It might be more efficient to make it with an ASIC. That's what Rubin CPX is, right? And Rubin CPX, I actually wrote it down here on my overall on my overall, what the chip happened. If you haven't joined the community, I definitely would say check it out at whatthechiphappened.com. If you're serious about AI and semiconductor investing, I drop analysis on a weekly basis. I talk about the NVIDIA $20 billion Grok deal here. But pretty much what I end up mentioning is this is the comparison to CPX. LPUs are very, very different from CPX, and that's the important thing. To CPX, like I was just talking about, is something that is crucial for extremely large context workloads, 1 million plus. And that's when we're talking about coding, right? Or video type of AI workloads. But those are not the only workloads out there, right? There's definitely so many other types of workloads. So I kind of talk about it here. There's things like uh, here at long code text coding, video understanding, CPX is great at. But something like an LPU, which is doesn't have HBM and uses SRAM, is not great for large context. But what it is great is for something that needs to be done quick. Voice, speech AI, real-time chat, gaming NPCs, financial trading tools, robotic control loops, agenic AIs, they usually call a lot and a lot of small calls every so often, a small prompt here, a small prompt here, a small prompt here to kind of create all these HNIC AI use cases. And that's where the LPU goes, right? So NVIDIA, what I believe is going to do in the far future, maybe not with Vera Rubin, but what's going to have is going to have its Rubin GPU, right? It's very completely, completely, or whatever GPU, very controllable 
product that you can switch. It's, it's, it fluctuates. Whatever type of workloads you need, it can go work with that. Then a customer might want to provide special ASICs because they might focus more on low latency needed solutions. So they might end up whatever the Grok version ends up being. Or maybe they're really focusing on coding or video. They're going to buy the Ruben CPX and so on. So now NVIDIA is going to have this, you can mix and match how you want your data center to re be really built. At the end of the day, because it's still a GPU solution, it's still going to be great for every type of workload. But if you have some unique use cases, you can go out there and add the extra ASIC, the extra CPX, the extra ROC. And I think that's what's going to make this amazing because we are getting into that robotic stage. We are getting into that agenic AI stage. And I think this acquisition, Acquihire, is the perfect, perfect way around it. So I would say the cost might seem a little expensive, but the opportunity is extremely large, right? If robotics is really a multi-hundred billion dollar opportunity, this is a no-brainer. If a genic AI is going to become massive across various workloads, this is amazing because then you're going to be able to send some of these workloads to those other ASIC solutions, being the Grok or the CPX, and your GPU ends up doing even more intensive workloads and you end up becoming and providing better total cost of ownership for your customer. And at the end of the day, that's going to win. Now, something like this, where you can now start to add ASICs into your GPU, it tells me that a lot of the ASIC competitors might not end up doing so well. I mean, I believe there are a few players out there that will continue. I mean, TPUs are not going to stop anytime soon. Tranium is also doing pretty well, but outside of those two, I don't know if it makes any sense for the other competitors to really release them out when NVIDIA is just going a thousand bazillion miles per hour. Um, so I think a lot of players are probably just spending too much money. Uh, so I, I'm really excited to see more and learn more about this. Hopefully we get it during the next GTC DC or, or GTC in general in, in, in um, California, where we really understand the master plan behind this. But I do think it's extremely bullish. I believe this is going to help NVIDIA continue to have a massive moat in the AI space. It is not like this opens up the complete market for NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA was already entering certain markets within this AI inference thanks to NVL72, NVL144. Then it even created sub-segments with the Ruben CPX. Now it's doing even more sub-segments here with this Grok. Uh, so it's a great, great acquisition. And I do believe it's going to be massive. It, in, in the next three or five years, we're going to say this was the Mellanox acquisition of the 20s, uh, of the mid-2020s, right? It, it, Mellanox was crucial for NVIDIA's success in networking. I think this is going to be a nice addition for low latency, HNIC, and robotics and real-time solution needs. Uh, that is going to help NVIDIA make a nice amount of money. So again, I hope you guys enjoy. If you really, really want to become a better investor, I personally use what the chip has. Um, First, uh, physical.ai slash Jose. I use this platform on a daily basis and also make sure to get that research at whatthechiphappened.com. You do get some promotions if you go to the website. I do have some quotes for you. So check that out as well. Peace out and see you all next time.